On the very last page of our notes, we have a section over calculating the concentration of solutions. And the concentration is really just referring to how much solute is dissolved in a solvent. So concentration means how strong something is. The words that we'll use to describe the concentration of something. Shh. If you're talking, please stop. The words that we use to describe the concentration are either that it will be concentrated or more diluted, or sometimes we just say dilute. So concentrated means that there is a high amount of solute, and diluted means that there is a low amount of solute per certain amount of solvent. So per given amount of solvent. So we use the term molarity, that's abbreviated with a capital M, we use molarity to discuss the concentration of something. Um, molarity stands for the number of moles of solute dissolved per liter of solution. So the equation for this looks like this. It's capital M for molarity equals moles of solute per liter of solution. So the way that we write this, also molarity is, um, or capital M for molar, not molarity, but molar. It's both the variable and it is the unit that we use. So the unit, meaning what you put at the end for like how we measure this, is also just a capital M that stands for molar. So for example, if you had a um, six molar concentration of hydrochloric acid, it would be written like that versus like three molar hydrochloric acid. So the M is our unit that we use. So the question for example one says an IV solution contains 5.10 moles of glucose in 100.5 milliliters of solution. What is the molarity of the solution? So we need to first of all keep in mind that this was given to us in moles and this was given to us in milliliters, but my equation uses moles in liters, so it's moles per liter. So I need to convert milliliters to liters first. So I will be using the equation that M equals moles per liter. I'm looking for the molarity, so I'm looking for M. I was given a number of moles, which is 5.10, but I can't just plug in my volume down here. It needs to actually be in liters. So I'm going to convert 100.5 milliliters into liters using dimensional analysis, that T chart that we learned a while ago. I'll bring down milliliters so that I disco down my units and they will eventually cancel out. And I can bring milliliters directly into liters. This is one of the conversion factors that I asked you to memorize at the very beginning of the year. First, do you remember which one is bigger, a milliliter or a liter? Liter is bigger, so we're going to put a one, ooh, what? A one, sorry, one will go next to liters. And then the question is how many milliliters are in one liter? A thousand, good. Okay, so milli means thousandth. So one thousand. So if there's one thousand on the bottom, by setting it up this way, this helps you to figure out are you multiplying or are you dividing by a thousand. So that's one of the more common mistakes that I see with this is if you don't set it up and you're like, oh yeah, milliliters to liters, that's a thousand, and then you'll just multiply by a thousand. But if you did it that direction, you're doing it incorrectly. So when you set it up like this, just like before, your milliliters would cancel, you're left with just liters, and you would divide 100.5 divided by a thousand. So you can use your phone calculator, you can use your calculators on your um, that are out on the tables, whatever you have access to, or some of you are just able to divide this in your head by moving the decimal place, that's totally fine, but if you are not 100% confident in your ability to do that in your head, there's no shame in plugging it into the calculator. So 100.5 divided by 1,000. 
So remember that when you write out your answers, if your answer is a decimal point, you need to use the leading zero, meaning don't just put 0 0.1005, I want it to be 0 0.1005 so I can see it. And then your unit on that is liters. So since that's in liters, this number I'm going to plug in down here. So 0 0.1005. And then to calculate the molarity, I would plug in 5.10 divided by 0 0.1005. And the answer is 50.7462. Is that what y'all got? So let's round this to two decimal places. So I would call it 50.75. And my unit on that would be M for molar. So the unit for molarity looks like the variable for molarity. Both of them are just a capital M. Any questions after doing that example? Pretty straightforward. Example two says, how many moles of Na2SO4 would be dissolved in 1.5 liters of a 0.24 molar solution of Na2SO4? Let's put a zero there. I just got done saying always put the zero, and then this one doesn't have it. Let me zoom it in so I can actually like write. So 0 0.24. So if we are looking for moles, it says how many moles, that means my final answer, if you want to set it up and like remind yourself what you're looking for, it's going to be blank moles. The only equation that I have so far is that molarity equals moles per liter. But if I'm solving for moles, then I need to get moles by itself. So currently, moles is being stuck to liters through division. So I need to do the opposite of that to get rid of liters. So if I multiply this side by liters, liters will cancel out. If I multiply the right side of my equation by liters, I also need to multiply the left side of my equation by liters. So then when I fix my equation, I get that liters times molarity equals moles. So all we did was rearrange the equation, manipulate it a little bit, so that we're solving for what the question is actually asking for. We're still going to be looking for moles, so I'm going to rewrite that. I have the number of liters, that's this, so I'm going to plug in 1.5. And I have the molarity, it's 0 0.24. So then I'll plug that into my calculator. So take a second, plug that one in. So 1.5 times 0.24. And when I hit enter, what do I get? Perfect. So then there's a follow-up question about this. So my answer was that 0.36 moles of sodium sulfate would be dissolved in 1.5 liters to make a 0.24 molar solution. Excuse me. Um, how many grams of Na2SO4 would you need to dissolve in that example to make that solution? So the way that we can do this is basically with this same information that we just calculated, this tells us how many moles we would need for a 1.5 liter solution, but in lab we don't have a way to measure moles. That's not something that we, that we do. But we do have an easy conversion all the time between grams and moles. So to get from moles to grams, remember that we use molar mass. So remember that the number on the periodic table is equivalent to one mole of whatever that substance is. But in this case, I don't have one mole of the substance. I have 0 0.36 moles. So I'm going to put 0 0.36 moles of N 
Na2SO4. And then I need to put that into a little t-chart to convert it. So I would bring down moles of Na2SO4. And I can convert that to grams of Na2SO4 using molar mass. So using what I just wrote here, it says the number on the periodic table is equivalent to one mole. So in one of these boxes, either this one or this one, I'm going to put the number one. Does one go in front of grams or does it go in front of moles? moles. It goes in front of moles. So molar mass is always one mole. Remember, we practiced that a ton in our stoichiometry unit. It's just been a minute. And then the number of grams will come from our periodic table. So let me make sure I have a periodic table up. I'll get rid of this. Oops, leave that. Okay. I'm going to pull up a periodic table. You should get out your periodic table so that you can also look this up. Do, do, do. So on my periodic table, I would look up sodium, and then if I look up sulfate, sulfate is up here. There's no mass there. So instead of using sulfate, I'm going to break that down into the individual atoms that compose it. So I would look up sulfur, and I would look up oxygen. So using your periodic table or using the numbers that you see up here, calculate the molar mass of sodium sulfate. So that is Na2SO4. So molar mass would mean taking sodium, taking sulfur, and taking oxygen. I have two sodium atoms. I have one sulfur and four oxygens. Then multiply each of those by their own molar masses. So sodium, 2 times 22.990. Sulfur would be 1 times 32.06. And oxygen would be 4 times 15.999. Remember, you'll multiply each of these, but then add them together. So take a second, calculate it for yourself. Make sure that you're confident in your own ability to calculate molar mass. This one should be pretty straightforward for you at this point. Yes. Did you calculate it? Calculate it. the total molar mass of all of them. What did you say? I got it too. Cool. Okay, so 142.036 is what we got. So 142.036 is the number of grams. Then to solve this. I would just multiply that number by 0 0.36. So pulling my calculator back out, multiply pi by 0.36. That gives me 51.13296. So 51.13 is what I'll round that to. Grams of Na2SO4. So that is how I would answer this question. The question asks how many grams. My answer was 51.13.